Now, in order to give you a demonstration of some of this, I'd like to bring out on stage two of our directors of product management. Uh, give them a warm welcome, Tom Crabb and Rick Wagner. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you today. So as John mentioned, we're going to talk a little bit more about what we're doing in our IAM area, or Identity and Access Management. So John and Jeff talked about the identity of things and the Internet of Things. So we're going to bring it a little bit closer to what we do in the Identity and Access space. So as Rick and I were talking about this, we came up with this kind of visual of an atom. So when we're talking about identity management, you really have to know who the identity is that you're working with. And then the things that would be like the electrons around that nucleus or the identity would be different devices they may have. They could be things like that. They could be entitlements. They could be roles. They might be applications. So if you can keep all those things in balance, if you think back to your physics days, if the atom stays in balance, everything's great. It's a very powerful tool. But if things get out of balance, things can go awry. So taking advantage of identity and access management technologies enables you to keep the right balance between what the user should have and not overextend or over entitle those people. So if you take a look at this picture, many of you have been in this audience a number of years. You remember when DirectSML and Identity Manager first came. Rick, I believe, is patient zero for IDM. He, he started using this. I remember visiting Rick when he worked at a company in Houston before he was with Novell or NetIQ. Those were the good old days. Way back when. Rick had hair. Way it was, back when. It was when. a lot different then. Okay, so back then, I don't have a lot of room to speak either, do I? So. so back then, if you remember when you were provisioning people or doing the zero day start, zero day stop, there were a fewer number of business people to deal with. You might have worked with HR, finance, and some others to create some relationships to do the provisioning. And you stayed pretty well in balance. You could keep the balls juggling. Then years went by. Now the number of people you deal with has gone up exponentially. John talked about shadow IT and those types of things. It's kind of the democratization of IT, if you will. You don't have to go through IT all the time to get something done. People have more access to more things, and so it's starting to tilt the balance a little bit more to favor the business. As they feel more empowered, now they can easily go out and get applications. If a department in marketing needs something or sales, they can certainly go out and get that. They don't need IT necessarily to provision things. I remember I used to be a director in IT, and we used to try and think up neat things. We tried to convince sales that using CRM on a BlackBerry would be really cool, and they didn't really think it was. Now it's the other way around. The business is pushing you and IT to drive new solutions, and it's getting more difficult, so the number of balls you have to juggle might be getting harder. And now, I won't ask for a show of hands, but I'm guessing many of you have your own laptops, your own tablets, your own cell phones, and you want to bring them to the office and use them. If you're a newer worker, why wouldn't it make sense if you used your laptop all the way through college? Why wouldn't you want to use it at the next job you had? It just seems like a tool to them and not necessarily something that IT would provision and give them. So you're getting a real change in what the business is capable of doing because they're very empowered and have the ability to not only get their own devices but their own applications and have access to things. Yet they expect IT to manage things and make it work. Like when you go get an app on the App Store, it just works, right? Right. I mean, from, from a user's experience, that's what they expect. We've, they've created a market where if I want something, I simply go out to the App Store, I tap on it, I expect it to work, I want single sign-on, I don't want to have to re-enter passwords again. And from an end-user standpoint, they don't care about things like SAML, CAMEL, OAuth, cut my left toe off. I don't know what that stuff is. I really don't care. As far as I know, Federation is Star Trek. I'm good with that, but I just want things to work. Right. So even though Rick's a product manager, he is a typical user. They don't really care where something comes from. They don't care how you did it. They don't care if it's magic on the back end. They just want to push a button, and it works. So you need your tools to make that happen and make that a reality. So if you can think back to your physics again, not only the atom, but we're going to revisit the lever or the fulcrum. So we use the fulcrum as a metaphor for identity and access management. So in order to get this back into balance, if we can change that lever a little bit and push it to the left and take advantage of the identity and access management technologies, that gives you the ability to do more with less. Notice you're still juggling more balls than you have in the past, but if you have better tools and are better able to deliver what the business wants, that's going to make you more successful. So with that, let's jump into a demonstration of some of the things we've yeah. got going. Enough slideware. Let's, let's show Absolutely. them what we can do. 
Okay, so again, as Tom said, as, as product management, we, we spend a lot of time on the road visiting with customers like yourself, trying to understand how you're using identity and access management and how to better leverage it. So let's go through just kind of the standard day in the life of somebody I want to request access. So I'm here on my Surface device, and I simply want to request access to something. So the first thing I would do, naturally, is to look at call something like, desk. no, I don't want to no. call the help okay, desk. Good. This is much I'm tired better. of talking to them. I want to go to Identity Manager and do self-service request. So very simply, I log in, I look, I make a request. Seems pretty intuitive and simple. Um, I want Salesforce, and it looks like it's going to give me some additional customer information yeah. and some data files. Sounds Oops. like something I would need, because when I go out and visit customers, I want to maybe know a little bit about their history, what they're doing, how they've done it, uh, some of the products that they have in place, so that I can get a better understanding yeah. and have a much more productive conversation with customer. It is nice to be prepared when you show up. Always. So simply, I'm requesting this, hit request, and it's done. It's that simple, it's easy. It's almost like buying an app from the App Store. But I bet there's a request out there that's waiting for John. John's kind of busy backstage, so if you wouldn't mind, okay. um, show how that is approved and on John's behalf. All right. No so security issues here. He, he gave us his permission. Okay. So over here on my iPad, we have IDM approvals for handhelds. I can click on the approvals piece. Let me come back and let me refresh this and see if we have a new task from Rick. Okay, he looks like you need to add a resource, Salesforce plus files. I can come down, I can approve it and move it on. I can also come over, I could have looked at it from my IDM home and done the task approval here. So I have a couple of ways. Not only from my iPad, but I could also do the handheld approvals from my iPhone and soon to be on the Android as well. So we've taken advantage of the fact that people that might be approving are busy and out and about, so they need different ways to approve things so things don't stay clogged up in the queue. So since we are kind of in a mobile world, and I want to be able to get to things on the road, why don't you show me a little bit how, if I were an end user, how I would ac access an application through mobile access. Okay. As we said earlier, the user just wants to click on something and they have access to it. So if I'm at my desktop, I could have a view. I can click on my mobile device and get access via mobile access, which is a feature of cloud access. So I have a desktop component or a mobile component. You notice here I've got all the apps that are provisioned for me based on my role, based on group membership, and things of that nature. So this is the view that I have. If there's anything new, they'll show up. So what we showed with IDM is they can be put in different groups, and that's how I ended up getting the Salesforce piece. I was added to another group, and therefore I have Salesforce. Any of these applications can also be protected by a multi-factor authentication. So app by app, I can choose a different authenticator type. So if I wanted to put something in that required an OTP, I could do that. Or maybe I don't all have smartphones, so I can use other out-of-band technologies like SMS, email, or other things. Or I could use biometrics or such. It really depends on how you want to set it up and what the risk tolerance or capabilities of the business are. So all that can be integrated into a very consumable, easy application via mobile access. So that was, that was really nice. So now I can actually click on it. I can we tap on it. We are ready to go on the road. So everything's ready to go. Now, one of the things that it looked like I got was access to additional customer data files and, and sales information. Looks like right here I've got those files out here waiting for me and, you know, inqu inquiring minds want to know. They look like some good so, stuff. So uh, sales history. You know what? I want to know what this is all about. So I'm going to just start browsing stuff here. There might be some good information. We could make some good stock picks with this kind of information. This exactly. Would be great. You know, if I want to do stuff all the time, I can certainly look, do looks that. Looks like someone's play. watching us, Rick, because there's, um, there's some kind of map up there, and Utah that, just went red. That would probably be kind of like that security side of the, the story where we said we were monitoring what was going on, like red, identity not tracking. Good either, is it? No, identity okay. tracking is uh, is is keeping an eye on me and watching what I'm doing. So looks like there's some excessive data access going on, which would probably trigger, would be a good thing if it triggered some kind of review that says, maybe you better look at it and make sure that what this person's doing is valid and whether or not it needs to be revoked. So why don't you give a little view into access review and what it would show from a review standpoint as to what this user, or what somebody like John would see when he gets the okay. review. All right, so the, the real key in what Rick's saying is, if that alarm showed up at the NOC or the SOC, would that person in the IT department really know if Rick should be accessing those files or not? Probably not. So we're taking and moving the decision point closer to his management. So in this case, I'm pulling up my screen as John again, and I have a button for access review. I can click on access review, and it's gonna come through and pull up, and so, I have a task, look, there's one task, sorry, I click on it, and it's gonna show me any activity that has been 
created for me. So I have an excessive file access review. I'll click on that. And it's going to give me some more detail about what actually got requested. So when I put that resource out there, I have no problem with Rick having access to Salesforce, but it didn't occur to me when I clicked to prove that he was also going to get some file access. So what I may want to do is come down and check on this bottom one and remove that access. Okay, so I can remove that access just for the file access, but leave him access to Salesforce. So it's very simple that Rick was able to request in real time to get things done to accomplish his tasks. I, as the manager, can click and approve things or revoke things as necessary in real time. So the business is protected, the user gets what they want, and everybody's happy. That's right. We kept everything in balance. So that pretty much sums everything up as far as the demonstration is concerned. But what we want to show today, or what, what we want to emphasize, what you saw today was several of the identity access management and security products working in conjunction to bring that, those things back into balance as we had talked to earlier. Things like identity manager, cloud access, identity tracking, showing the excessive file access, and doing things like data access governance with access review. Being able to understand all of the context, minimizing the rights, what somebody has, enforcing the access controls, monitoring the activities to keep things in check. So the users have what they want, they're happy, yet we still maintain the balance of management and control from IT and security standpoint. So with that, what we'd like to do is to invite you to IT Central this year in the interactive experience. The interactive experience is based very similar to this, where you can actually experience the keynote demonstration for yourself. In addition to that, tomorrow afternoon, I'll be doing a session on the keynote factor fiction and exactly how all of these parts work together. So you can really see that these are solutions and technologies that are available today to help your organization. So with that, we thank you very much and appreciate you being here. Thank you.